Hello and welcome to The Writing on the Wall, Episode 4. We saw from earlier episodes that the writing is on the wall, this the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. To review how God has numbered this kingdom, please watch The Writing on the Wall, Episodes 1 through 3. It's the best way to get an understanding of the topic of what we're talking about, and it will help you see the importance of the next few slides. What we're going to do is we're going to start in Deuteronomy, their vine of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. The modern world in these latter days has rejected the vine of Christ. They have their own vine or their vine of the vine of Sodom. And we see the vine covering the entire nation. It's covering our houses. It has devoured the kingdom. It is the vine of Sodom. It opposes Christ. It has set itself up as a false vine. It is the vine of Sodom and it is all around and you can see it just about wherever you look. It is the vine of Sodom. Their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. And we have seen that this land is indeed submerged in fields, electromagnetic fields, communications, microwaves. We are submerged in fields, in waves. When you put the two together, their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. You get the electrical grid and the communication system of the modern world. Their vine of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. The true vine is Christ. John 15, I am the vine, ye the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So Jesus Christ is the vine. We are the branches, as you see there. The grapes represent the fruit. We are connected to the vine and we bring forth fruit. If you take us out of the vine, the branch would wither and die and could produce no fruit. So without the vine, we can do nothing. That is the pattern. The true vine is Christ. So the true vine is Christ. Jesus Christ called himself the true vine, almost like he knew there would be a false vine at some point. So he pointed out that he is the true vine. Well, now we have that false vine around us, the vine of Sodom. The vine of Sodom has mimicked the true vine. And this age, the people of this age, these latter days, have attached themselves to the vine of Sodom. And with the vine of Sodom, they have their own fruit. And it's interesting that one of the most popular devices is actually named for fruit. And of course, it must be attached to the vine of Sodom, for without it, it can do nothing. Now, this is a pattern set in the word. The reason it looks like this is because the worlds were framed by the word of God, like it said in Hebrews. The worlds were framed. This age was framed. So as time went on and things came to pass, they fit the framework laid out by the word of God. And that framework said it would be the vine of Sodom. And so you see that just like the branches that we are the branches and we can produce no fruit without being attached to Jesus Christ, the true vine, the vine of Sodom, people are attached to the vine of Sodom. And that's what they produce fruit with. They can do no work. They can do no communication. They can do virtually nothing without the vine of Sodom. The world has been framed by the word of God, which is why you can see these patterns. Their vine of the vine of Sodom, their vine, the electrical system, the wires, the electrical grid, the vine of Sodom. They are the branches. And without it, they can produce no fruit. It fits the pattern. The reason it fits the pattern is because we are in the latter days and God's word has framed this world. So we see that the society is attached to the vine of Sodom and without it, they can do nothing. Continuing in Deuteronomy, where their vine of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes, grapes of gall, their clusters, bitter. Okay, so following this, the, the vine of Sodom is all the electrical system, the grapes being the fruit that the people have produced being connected to that system. 
their grapes are grapes of poison. They're clusters, and we'll see their, their fruit does come in clusters. Bitter, poison. Their wine, the poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asps. Their wine, when you process grapes, you get wine. The processors on all these devices and all this fruit that is attached to the vine of Sodom, it also produces wine. It is the poison of dragons, and this nation, indeed, this world, is drunken on that wine. It is the poison of dragons. It is the cruel venom of asps. It said their clusters are bitter, the clusters of grapes, the clusters of their fruit. And we see that our fruit doesn't have one purpose. It's not just one thing anymore. It's clusters. All the apps, all the different things you can do with it, it's just clusters in these devices. Clusters of fruit, clusters of fruit, just clusters of fruit. Their grapes are gall, their clusters bitter, their wine the poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asps. Their wine is indeed the poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asps. God has numbered this kingdom, their grapes, grapes of gall, their clusters bitter. Eshkal is the word translated clusters. It is number H811. God has numbered this kingdom, and the Greek 811 is the word asotos. It only occurs one time, translated riotous. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. This is the story of the prodigal son, and this is what's happened to God's people. God's people over time went to a far country. They came to this land, America, and they're wasted, they, they wasted their substance with riotous living. He has given them such a blessing more than any other nation in the history. And what did they do? They set up a system of idolatry. But the good news is, just like the prodigal son returned, the writing on the wall is so that God's people can wake up and realize they're living in a pigsty. They're living among swine. They are trusting in the vine of Sodom, and it will fail them. But the good news is they can come back to God because Jesus Christ is the Lamb. He was sacrificed for their sins, and they can come, and Father God will welcome them with open arms, for His Son has completed His task on the cross, and it is finished. The grapes on the vine of Sodom are grapes of gall. Their clusters bitter. The clusters are numbered with riotous living, riotous living of the type of the prodigal son. And this is where we're at today. The clusters of the vine of Sodom have proliferated and it has brought with it the riotous lifestyle. This kingdom is numbered, so let's go ahead and look at the word bitter. They're grapes, grapes of gall, they're clusters, bitter. Describing the clusters, they're bitter. That word bitter is marora. It is H4846, and it is numbered with G4846, sompnigo. That word means to choke utterly. The clusters, bitter, numbered with to choke utterly. And we also remember that it said in Isaiah, and his breath as an overflowing stream, the flood, overflowing flood, shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, to choke utterly, reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And let's see where that uh, word appears. In Luke, we have it. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Well, this is where we're at today. This world is the vine of Sodom has covered it, and, and some have fell among those thorns. This generation has fallen among those thorns, and many of them are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. They are being sifted the overflowing stream has reached to the midst of their neck. They are choked. 
and they bring forth no fruit. God's word is numbered. This is not a coincidence. The writing is on the wall. God hath numbered thy kingdom. The bitter poison of the clusters of the vine of Sodom is utterly choking this generation. You can look around and see it. It's utterly choking this generation. This generation has fallen among thorns. So let's see this picture. We have the vine of Sodom, the fields of Gomorrah. This generation lives among that. They abide in the vine of Sodom and in the fields of Gomorrah. So let's look at the thorns. The thorn is like the vine of Sodom. The word, like the seed, falls among thorns. Those people are there and when they have heard, they go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life because of where they're at. They are among thorns. They are among the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. They are carried away of the flood. So we see that this generation is that which fell among thorns. Since God hath numbered this kingdom, let's check out thorns. Thorns, the Greek word acantha, occurs 14 times. G173. It is numbered with H173. And H173 is one of Esau's wives, which is interesting if you look at Obadiah, how are of Esau searched out? Are his hidden things sought up? Well, all this technology, all this stuff that we have, these thorns are hidden things that have been sought up. And the name of his wife, the name of his wife, Aholibama, is very interesting. It means tent of the high place. The thorns are numbered with tent of the high place. And the tent of the high place, well, his, name, his wife's name is a word combination from Ohel, means tabernacle or tent, and Bama, high place, heights, waves. Yes, thorns is numbered with tent of the high place. Why is that? It's because modern buildings are tabernacles of the high place, tabernacles of waves. They are submerged in waves. Our entire kingdom is, and God hath numbered thy kingdom. Well, the thorns are the vine of Sodom. Well, some seed fell among those thorns, and that is this generation. This kingdom is numbered, and you can see it as its thorns are numbered with the tent of the high place, and that is where we're at now. The writing is literally on the walls and in the walls. Thorns numbered with tent of the high place, a holy Bama, from Ohel, tabernacle tent, Bama, high place, heights. The thorns is numbered with a name combined from those two words, Ohel, tabernacle, and Bama, high place. Let's not forget that Bama, the high place, heights, waves, is numbered with Gomorrah, which means submersion. We are submerged in these waves. It is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. That's the vine of this age, of this kingdom. Their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Well, the writing is on the wall. It is literally on the wall, in the wall. This kingdom is numbered. You are probably in a tent of the high place right now. The writing is on the wall. It is on the wall and you can read it. It has fallen among thorns. It has fallen among this age, this vine of Sodom, these fields of Gomorrah. It has fallen now. Will it be choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life for you? Or will you abide in the vine of Christ, the true vine? Will you abide in the truth? Or will you abide in the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah? We are just beginning to see the writing on the wall. There is a lot more coming. And as we see more and more, we will realize that God did not leave this generation. He sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions. The people of the latter days have built their kingdom upon the sand. They trust in falsehood and rely upon the gods of gold and silver to save them. There is a storm coming. And only those who have built upon the rock of Christ will stand. God sent his word as a warning. The people of this age, of this age have built themselves up to heaven on falsehood. They have destroyed themselves. 
This, the writing on the wall, is a sign of fire to this generation. A sign of fire to those to repent and be saved, to abide in the vine of Christ, the only true vine.